It's the Action Figure Show. On tonight's show, the Action Figure of the Week. Toys We Can't Remember. Star Wars Match Game. Forgotten Toy Stores. The latest in Action Figure News. Special guest, Douglas Barr. All that and more on the Action Figure Show. And now back from a recent chili dog sucking contest behind a local Tasty Freeze, it's that junk man. Thank you, Larry. Welcome back, guys, to the Action Figure Show, where we give you the latest news in action figures, talk action figures, toys, pop culture, all kinds of things. We got a lot of exciting things coming up, including a new segment of uh, Star Wars Match Game. We played this once before. You guys liked it, so we're going to play it again. Play it again, Sam. As always, we start off the show. We're taking a look at Larry J. Wampa's weekend. He always has a wild, crazy weekend. So, Larry, what'd you do this weekend? Well, really, this weekend, I really didn't do that much. My girl, Charlie Johnson, and I, well, we decided to end things. I don't know why I just can't find a nice girl. I mean, I'm not that picky. I just want a girl with maybe a perm in her hair or a nice curly weave. You know, a girl with a new edition Bobby Brown button on her sleeve. And I'm talking about Bobby Brown, not that girl from Strange Things. Um, maybe she could be wearing gold with her biker shorts. That would be nice. Baby hair pumping. Oh, man, lip gloss shining? Whew. That gets me in the mood to do some whining and dining for sure. Maybe her name would be Lisa, Angela, Pamela, maybe even Renee. Sounds to me like you need a roundaway girl. Okay, let's start off the show with the action figure of the week. This is where we look at a random action figure and tell you a little about it. Let's take a look. This is Benji from the Bionic 6 action figure line, released by the company LJN, and he's dressed in all yellow. Look at him. Isn't he a nice, young, strapping lad? I tell you, I don't know who this is. I don't know much about the action figure line, but just looking at it, I wish he was my best friend. Now let's start off with some action figure news. We got it right here. All the latest in action figure news right here. Right here. Are you a fan of G.I. Joe? Well, are you a fan of the video game Fortnite? Well, if you're 12 or you like G.I. Joe, you're probably a fan of both of them. So let's take a look at what Hasbro has unveiled, a action figure from G.I. Joe and Fortnite. Hasbro teams up with video game Fortnite for a G.I. Joe Snake Eyes action figure. This seems to be getting a little carried away, but I have to also admit, this looks pretty darn cool. G.I. Joe, Fortnite. Well, it probably, bridges, it probably bridges a gap between adult collector and their kids. Their kids probably play Fortnite and dad's probably buying G.I. Joe stuff. So maybe it's a good way for two people to bond together. So I won't diss it, as they say. Uh, let's talk some scary news. You want to hear some scary news? The toy company, Trick or Treat Studios. Never heard of them, but apparently they make scary stuff. So after seeing this, I'm going to have to check out to see what else they make. Take a look at what they have coming out. Trick or Treat Studios will be releasing this bloody Michael Myers action figure. For only $140, you can get it now at fun.com. Fun.com. I don't know exactly what fun.com is, but as soon as I get done with this video, I'm headed over to fun.com. And no, they did not pay for me to say this. But hey, if you want me to pay me to say something, I'm going to sell out in a second. Okay, this is a new segment where we're going to talk about toys we don't remember. Toys we grew up on, we just can't remember. Let's see. Uh, Larry, this, Larry, you're going to join me on this one. I'm going to start it off here with this toy I can't remember. It was an action figure. Played with it. You, uh, I, I don't know. I can't remember anything about it. I just remember I used to love this thing. I can't remember. If I could remember what it was, then I wouldn't do this segment. I would just tell you what it was. But it was like this little action figure. And he's like had this little car thing. I can't remember, but he sat on top of it or inside of it. I don't remember. I don't remember it all. Larry, what toy don't you remember? Well, if I don't remember it, it's going to be hard for me to talk about it. I do remember getting this toy and I remember playing with it, but I don't remember what it did. It was yellow. That's all I remember. Sorry, guys. Sometimes these uh, segments, they come off good on when I'm thinking them up and writing them down. But then when I get here in front of the camera to do them, I'm like... Well, that didn't go over too well. So we probably won't see segment two of things we don't remember. Because it's hard to talk about things you don't remember because you don't remember them. So let's get back to talking action figure news right here. I got all the latest action figure news right here. Look at all this news we're going to do. And it's no Star Wars news because I figured 
everybody's already talked about all that that came out this week. It was a lot of Star Wars news toy-wise, but I figure most people's already talked about that. And I did a video on the one I wanted to talk about, the Retro Black Series. So, um, this is more scary news. More scary news. I think you'll enjoy this one, especially if you like scary stuff. Check this out. NECA has made a deal with Universal Studios to do action figures based on the classic Universal Monsters. The first one to be shown is this black and white Frankenstein from the 1931 classic film. Don't worry, his lovely bride will be released soon and more. Woo, that's scary right there. And before you tell me in the comments that's not Frankenstein, that's Frankenstein's monster. We all know this. You don't have to prove you're a geek. If you're watching this, you all know you're a geek. So, congratulations. But... Yeah, it's Frankenstein's monster, but we all call him Frankenstein, or the monster in the blazer suit. Uh, blazer jacket, I should say. What is this? It's tagging my Wrang Wrangler jeans. <laughs> Didn't get a Wrangler action figure with them. So, what well, we got more news. This is news from, who would talk, oh, no, it's not news. It's time for an ad break. This is where we got to pay the bills to turn some lights on around here. So, sit back. We'll be back in about 60 seconds. It's about to happen. Zare is stocking up for a grand opening sale you won't want to miss. Setting out special grand opening bargains everywhere you look. We're celebrating the opening of our new store at 115th Street and South Halstead Street. And every Zare store in Chicagoland is joining in. A great grand opening sale just when you need it. Just in time for spring. Just about to start in every Zare store. It starts 10 a.m. Sunday. Just what is the PB in new PB Max? PB don't mean pineapple beanie, pet barracuda, or parachuting buffalo. PB don't mean prehistoric barber or pig basketball. PB means peanut butter. Lots of real peanut butter in pure milk chocolate with a crunch of a whole grain cookie. Now that's maximum satisfaction. Even if you're as mean as the Pottstown barbarian, you'll be pleased in one powerful life. PB Max, we mean peanut butter. Welcome back to the show, guys. See, that didn't take long. Sit back, watch some ads, and it gives us a chance to recoup and everything and move on to some more action figure news right here. News, and this news comes from Hasbro, and it's Kenner-related. So I think you'll like this. If you like old Kenner stuff, well, this isn't old Kenner stuff, but it's in the theme of old Kenner stuff. Let's talk about this one right here. Hasbro's releasing new retro-style Marvel hero figures. This is Series 2. We have already talked about Series 1 a couple of videos back. But they do bar the logo of Kenner. They will be the Hulk, an action figure called Carol, Magneto, and the hottest action figure of them all, the Human Torch. These action figures are done in a Kenner-style retro look. And, be sure, and they'll look really great to your old Star Wars figures. Those look really, really cool. But come on, Hasbro, if you're going to do retro look, why not just do superpowers? Why don't you make them look like superpowers? And that, you know, you can keep your retro Star Wars look to your Star Wars toys and then do a retro look for your superpowers. I mean, that was Kenner also. Um, what were we doing today? Oh, got another piece of news here. Let me put this down. This is my serious news. Usually, I don't like to talk rumors unless I can, you know, hear it from a different source and maybe two different sources. You know, I did a rumor about the wave two of the retro figures that was about 90 percent right so i felt comfortable with this guy that told me that also told me this but again i want to file this on the rumors because i really don't like talking rumors too much here because i'm not a news channel but we do the action figure news and i mostly wanted to do this to see what you guys thought anyway my source has told me that kenner is looking into doing a retro figure of Indiana Jones. Now, I guess the retro is the right word. This will be just a re-release, you know, kind of like they did with the Star Wars, like they did with the Star Wars, Star Wars, like they did with the Star Wars line where they released Luke and Han with the retro look. Well, there's talk of Indiana Jones. Just one, just Indiana Jones himself, not the whole line. This will be a Comic-Con exclusive or a con exclusive for the summer or maybe a Pulse exclusive during the summer. Not even sure if cons are going to open back up, but I'm sure they'll still do con exclusives anyway but this will be just a retro kenner style indiana jones and i'm sure it'd be overpriced and hard to find if it's an exclusive but he did say there were some technical legal problems worked between paramount and those old figures not really sure i'm not a lawyer i don't know all about that but i'm guessing you know by the time 
Lucasfilm or Lucas got around to doing the rights to Indiana Jones, he didn't get as much of the rights as he did like with Star Wars when they didn't think, oh, merchandise, who cares? You know, by Raiders and this time, they were on to Lucas's plan to dominate the world with merchandising rights. So maybe there is some loopholes there they have to work out some contracts or something, or maybe they're just not going to do it because of that. But again, I just wanted to put it out there. If I find out more, I will pass it on through the uh, social media accounts and do a video on it, I'm sure. But I'm curious what you guys would think about it. Indiana Jones, that's just uh, taking the same mold from the old figures and really releasing just again, just Indiana Jones, what I'm hearing. But he said he hasn't heard anything since the summer. Around August was the last he heard talk about it. So maybe they couldn't get everything worked out. Hey, I'm not one for inside news. But I tell you, who knows more about inside news than inverted penis this guy's got sources all over the place he's got forces on 4chan he got sources on reddit he's got sources on any webs he even gets news from a website called we got this covered i mean i heard they tried to hire him but he was he was just asking too much but this guy's got some breaking news for you some inside information about star wars and i knew you guys would want to hear it here is inverted penis Welcome back, my little minions. I've got some more news from inside sources. Did you notice all the new Star Wars toys released coming out this year are all from the original or prequels? There's none from the new movies, none from the sequels. Why is that? Well, I heard that Hasbro put the foot down. They told Disney, we're never making anything from the series movies again. They suck. No one likes them. The fans don't like them. The public doesn't like them. No one will. Disney was very upset, but there was nothing they could do about it. You'll get no toys from Hasbro from the new movies. Whew. Where does he get that wonderful news? I mean, he knows, don't he, Larry, he knows all the sorts. Don't he know all the news? Yeah, I don't know how he does it. Going over the 4chan every day, reading the gossip over there, or maybe or going over to Reddit and reading some gossip over there. Man, I don't see how he does it. Larry, don't be a hater. You know, whenever I say something bad about a YouTuber, I'm told, well, that's because you're jealous. They got more viewers than you got. I would rather have no views than have to make up news. But we know inverted penis isn't making up news. That guy's straight on right there. He's got all the information. He's no Mike Zero. Okay, what we got now? Let me run my mouse up. I know that's not very professional here. We're going to play Star Wars Match Game. Larry, you remember the old game, Match Game? Oh, yeah, I love Match Game with Gene Rayburn. A very good game. Well, Larry, you're going to play Star Wars Match Game, and this time you're going to see if you can match up the answers with Captain Foley from Trek Yards. If you don't know Captain Foley, I'll put a link in the description of Trek Yards and all, but you can just Google Trek Yards. You'll find a lot of information there about uh, Captain Foley and Trek Yards. This guy knows more about Star Trek than Gene Roddenberry. At least right now, anyway. Um, but Larry, you're going to try to match up. I mean, Captain Foley is going to try to match up with Larry and the great folks over at the Awesome Geek Show. Make sure I got that right. The Super Awesome Geek Show. I know I was going to be honest with you. I asked this guy his name before I started recording, and uh, I forgot to ask his name. We talk all the time, but I just, you know, you see these people on social media and you don't really ask their names. So I'm just going to call him the Geek Show guy for right now. Um, but we're going to see if Captain Foley can match up with the Geek Show, the awesome Geek Show guys. Check them out. Great podcast, great YouTube channel. If you're into toys, you'll really enjoy that. I'll put a link to that in the description also. Again, it does a podcast, YouTube channel, a super awesome Geek Show. I mean, that name alone makes you want to go check that out. So check that out very, very soon. As soon as you watch this video, head over there and then check out Captain Foley. But let's see. I got the questions right here. We're going to see who can match them up uh, with Captain Foley. Captain Foley, you don't win anything. You just uh, you get to walk around for a week bragging about how you won Star Wars Match Game on the action figure show. Sadly, there's no Brett Summers. You have to go against Larry. I wish we had Charles Nelson Riley on here too, but we don't. <laughs> Uh, number one, right here, I like this one, it's, cl it's close to home. Number one, Watto, the junk dealer, was so cheap. He was so cheap, he once paid $2 for a blink. Let's see who can get it. Let's see here, let's give him time to write the answers down, and then we'll see if Captain Foldy can match up with him. Uh, Larry said he's ready. Larry, what do you have? I think Watto was so cheap that he once paid $2 for a hand job from Marodian. 
Larry, I've said it once, I've said it a thousand times. This is a family show, Larry. Family show. Uh, let's head over to the awesome geek show and see what they what he has to say. What did you put? Fill in the blank. What did you put in? Lenny, good to see you. Not really sure who Lenny is. Waddle the junk dealer was so cheap. I mean, he's so cheap that he spent two dollars on a hyperdrive motivator. I mean, everyone knows you've got to buy quality when it comes to hyperdrive motivators. Very, very good one right there. Let's see if Captain Foley can match up. In case you guys don't know, I'm Captain Foley from the web series Trek Yards. Um, check us out on YouTube, Trek Yards, all one word. We talk about the ships and tech of Star Trek. We also have a spin-off show, our sister show called Fleet Yards, where we talk about all of those sci-fi franchises, ships, and tech. So check out Fleet Yards as well. Uh, we're on Twitter, we're on Facebook, and we're on you know, YouTube. We're all over the place, even Instagram. Go check us out and uh, join the channel, subscribe, and you won't be disappointed, I promise. I think he's stalling to try to come up with a good answer. Waddle the junk dealer was so cheap. He was so cheap he paid two dollars for a... He paid two dollars for a droid building slave and his mom. Two dollars for two slaves. That's a pretty good deal. Whoa, Captain Foley. Call it with a feeling. That's a good answer right there, Captain Foley. And we're going to have Gangster Chewbacca take the score. So uh, what do you think about the score so far, Ca uh, Gangster Chewbacca? Well, Captain Foley has zero points because that was nowhere near the same answer. Okay, let's go to number two right here. Number two. This one's about Han Solo. We all like Han Solo. Han Solo loves to fly his Falcon. But, he went, but when he was a kid, he used to love to fly his Blink. Why is it blank? We'll give some people time to answer right there. Love to uh, see what you guys say right here. Oh, the Awesome Geek Show has the answer before Larry this time. Awesome Geek Show. Uh, Han Solo loves to fly the Falcon, but as a kid, he used to love to fly something else. What did you put? I would say he used to fly his kite. He had a kite in the shape of a womp rat and would just fly that thing around all over the place. Yeah, that's what it was, a kite. Man, now that's 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 thinking on your toes right there. Also, awesome neat show. That is thinking on your toes. I bet Captain Foley can't match that. Uh, Larry's got an answer. Larry, what do you have? I put tricycle. That he used to fly his tricycle. Larry, 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 Larry. That's for you, Larry. Uh, Captain Foley, let's see if he can match up with the Awesome Geek Show and Larry. See if he can match any of these. Let's go, Captain Foley. Let's see what your answer is. When Han Solo was a kid, he would fly his pigeon. Ooh, I don't think that's a match right there, Captain Foley. But uh, we're going to have to ask uh, Gangster Chewbacca. Gangster, would you consider that a match? Well, although some of the pigeons on the seventh moon of Yavin have three legs, I'm going to say it's not a match. Sorry, Captain Foley. No match for you. Number three right here on the Star Wars Match Game Show. Yoda was always green. In fact, early in his life, he was blank. He was blank. Yoda wasn't always green. I think I read the question wrong. Yoda wasn't always green. In fact, when his early life, he was blank. So, so let's go. Larry's got an answer. Larry, what was Yoda before he was green? Yoda wasn't always green with envy. At some time, he was blue. Good answer and good color. I thought you were going to get a little dirty there, Larry. Glad you didn't. Okay, the awesome geek show has an answer also. What is your answer? Yoda wasn't always green. You know, in fact, early in his life, he was a used car salesman. Yeah, I mean, he could get right under there, tell you every nook and cranny of the car. Yeah. What the walk right pigeon shit is this guy talking about? Oh, did you want a color? Don't listen to Larry. You can get any answer you like. Um, pink. He was he was pink. Geek Show, looks like you guys are on the same path right there. Let's see if uh, Captain Foley can match up with either of these guys. Captain Foley, what do you have? <clears throat> Ugh, come on, Captain Foley. Early in his life, he was... You have 15 seconds. I would say... Very sad and depressed. So therefore, blue. He was blue. Because, you know, you're 50, year old, you're 50 years old and you're still, you know, can't really communicate with anybody. Just saying, unless Grogu's an, an exception to the rule. So yeah, I'd say he's blue instead of green. That's a good answer, Captain Foley. If you ask me, that's a match with one of the guys here, but we're going to have to ask 
Gangster Chewbacca if that's a match. It was a match, but he ran out of time. He answered right before the buzzer went off in my studio. Uh, so I can't really give it to him. That is one harsh judge right there against the Chewbacca. Captain Foley, I think he's just, uh, he just doesn't like you. I could be wrong. Number four. Here we go. Number four in Star Wars Match Game. Get your pens ready. Anne Peru had her own lightsaber. Did y'all know that? Most people didn't know that. Anne Peru has her own lightsaber. Uh, she once used it to cut, she once used it to blank Uncle Owen. She used, yep, she had her own lightsaber and she used it to blank Uncle Owen. Scared to ask the answers of this one here. <sighs> Larry says he's ready. Larry, remember it's a family show. Aunt Peru had her own lightsaber. She used to she used it to blank Uncle Owen. Well, she used her lightsaber for what every woman would use that lightsaber for. It was to castrate her husband. Oh, Larry. Larry, you knew not to ask you that. Let's see if the super awesome super geek show can keep it a little clean. Uh, what answer did you get? It's it's Baru, like B E R U Baru. Actually, her name is Dominic Baru Smith. What would she do to Uncle Owen? She would use it to fix Uncle Owen's like speeder. He doesn't really need to use it anything anymore. She just cut it right in half. Speaking of lightsabers, my uncle got his arm cut off by a lightsaber thanks to a wannabe Jedi. Captain Foley, you got to help me stay out of the gutter here. You're going to help me. I'm going to get demonetized if I keep getting answers like this. Captain Foley, what's your answer? You have 25 seconds. Fifteen seconds. That's a tough one, actually. So if Aunt Peru had her own lightsaber, she would use it to blink Uncle Owen. She would use it to... Five seconds! <sighs> she would use it to... Too late, time's up. We got one more for the Star Wars Match Game Show, number five. And it's about Chewbacca. Chewbacca is so big, but he's not as big as Lobot Blank. Okay, you guys, I think Larry's writing, I can tell Larry's thinking really hard. Uh, Lobot is, well, sorry, Chewbacca is so big, but he's not as big as Lobot Blank. Well, Chewbacca is really big, but he's not as big as Lobot Oh, come on, Larry. I'm going to have to bleep that one out. That's just going too far. It's going to be hard for you guys to match up with that, with that bleep. Huh, let's see. Look, super awesome geek show. Uh, what does he have to say? <laughs> oh, this one could go to some very dark places, but I guess we'll keep it, uh, we'll keep it for all general audiences, okay? Um, Chewbacca is so big, but he's not as big as Lobot's intellect. You know, he's got that computer thing. There's lots of programming up there that Chewbacca doesn't have, and he can't compare to. That's a little that's a little uh, racy, but I'll take that answer. We don't have to bleep it out, at least. Uh, uh, Captain Foley, see if he can match up with any of these guys. You know, we should have done Captain Foley first, like Match Game. I just thought about that. But it's not live. He can't hear us. So here we go, Captain Foley. Chewbacca is so big, but not as big as Lobot's. You have three seconds. Not as big as Lobot's death count. There you go. That's a good one. Cause I'm sure Lobot has a good good kill streak going on. Oh come on, Captain Foley. Trust you not to go blue. Uh, Games of Chewbacca has been adding up the matches to see who we'll see if Captain Foley won. See if he beat Larry. See if he beat beat Super Awesome Geek Show, or if he beat both of them. Let's see. Uh, Games of Chewbacca, what's the total? Well, Captain Foley was successful at not matching anyone. He did match Larry on one occasion, but he ran out of time before he could match him, so I can't give him the win for that. Well, thank you for playing Star Wars Match Game again. Trek Yards, Captain Foley, check it out if you haven't, and check out the podcast, the YouTube channel for. Let me make sure I get it right just because Super Awesome Geek Show. Sometimes I get the awesome and the geek mixed up, so Super Awesome Geek Show. Believe me, you're going to love to check out that YouTube channel and uh, listen to his podcast, but that's it. We'll be right back with more news. 
Slow down. Listen to your mother. Slow down. Listen to your mother. Slow down. Listen to your mother. This Thursday is no ordinary day. It's Ames' big back-to-school one-day sale with 10 to 70% off throughout the store. Every department, every aisle. Thursday only, only at Ames. A sale this big doesn't happen every day. Slow down. Yuck! Oh, come on! Don't knock it till you try it. Put a little on your plate. Don't make a face before you taste it. Some kids think it's great. Why don't you try a smorgasbord dinner? Which means a smidgen of this and a smidgen of that. Don't knock it till you try it. Eating can be fun. With little bites of different things instead of lots of one. Don't quibble till you nibble a dabble or a dibble of everything that's on your plate. And then go back and eat the things you like again. Welcome back, everybody, to the Action Figure Show, where we give you the latest in action figure news, top pop culture, action figure toys. Never know what we're going to talk about here. Uh, some sad news to uh, end the news for the day. The last two Toys R Us in the United States have closed down. That's right. Uh, these two Toys R Us started back up in November 2019 as a way to try to bring Toys R Us back to America. But... Sadly, uh, mostly due probably to the Cornelius virus, they had to shut the doors. That's right. The Sadly, the last two Toys R Us in America has officially closed. Sad. Now, if you want to go to Toys R Us and relive those glory days of uh, Jeffrey Bucks, you're going to have to go up to Canada. Maybe you'll see Captain Foley in there buying an action figure or two. Who knows? But uh, this got me to thinking of maybe some retail stores that I used to love to shop in that's no longer around. And I got right here my top five favorite. I'm not counting KBs or toy stores. These are more department type stores. So see if you shopped at any of these here. Number five is where I found the man-eating cow tick figure when it was really hard to find and really rare. I also found a, a Spider-Man Rhino figure that was really hard to find at the time, back in the 90s. Number five, service merchandise. Did anyone go to service merchandise? When I was little, it was called Wilson's, and then I think it got bought out and became service merchandise. Yes, yeah, service, it was what they called a warehouse store. They, from what I understand, a lot of stuff in there, you would shop it, you would see it, and you couldn't buy it, you would tell someone. It was like Amazon, but you had to go to it. It was weird, but they did have some stuff. I remember buying Super Mario Brothers 3. At service merchandise, service merchandise right there. Remember, that's the first place I saw the 90s Star Wars figures too. Walked into it. I uh, actually heard someone say they were there. Went and looked, and they were on the pegs. Couldn't believe it. Uh, There's one of those stores really didn't care about getting stuff out early. So number five, service merchandise. Number four is two stores in one because I think they were owned by the same people. Uh, Aim or T G and Y. Now I don't, I don't, I remember this store. It actually became a Walmart later, but. I remember always going to them looking for toys. AIM or TGNY. Does anybody remember those? TGNY. I don't know what it stands for. Toys, groceries, and yummies. I guess that's the top of my head. I don't know. Um, number three. Number three. This is going way back here. The green stamp store. Now, you might have had it called something else. You remember this? You would go to the grocery store, get some green stamps, little stickers or little stamps, put them in your little book. You go to your green stamp store. And it would be usually a bunch of crap here, but you could trade in those green stamps you collected for toys. That's right. I remember getting long darts at the green stamp store. Long darts. Yeah. Uh, what's that, Larry? You remember the green stamp store? Oh, I remember saving green stamps. In fact, on one, one time I remember saving up a whole book. Our family saved up like 98 books of green stamps. And the store down the road was going out of business, so we had to use them. But all the boys in the family wanted to get a robot, you know, something sensible. But all the girls wanted to use the stamps to get... A sewing machine. We didn't know what to do, so we had this contest to see who could build a house out of playing cards, and the first one to knock it over loses, and they don't get the stamps. But the girls won, but then they went to the green stamp store, and they decided to get something sensible that we could all use. A color television set. Larry. Number two. There's two stores in one. I'm going to merge them as number two. Media Play and Suncoast Video Stores. This is the place to go to buy movies. VHS, Laserdisc, whatever you were into. DVDs when they started. But they usually had a toy section that was more aimed to the collector. And I love going to... It was Saturday. 
had to waste time, you would always find me at Media Play. I mean, uh, it was the only place I knew at the time to buy VHS movies that were in widescreen. I was like, I gotta get that, gotta get widescreen. Number one, no surprise if you watch my channel, this is where I used to buy all my Star Wars figures besides Kmart when I was a kid, Zares. I love Zares, I just love saying the name of it. Zares, bring someone, bring back Zares, please. But that's a look at five retail stores I used to love to shop in when I was a kid. Now it's time to get on to the special guest. We've got a special guest here, Douglas Barr. I think you all remember him from The Fall Guy, and I think he was on a couple episodes of everyone's favorite show, Designing Women. I haven't seen him in a long time, but we tracked him down. Here he is, ladies and gentlemen, Douglas. Uh, man. Duck man. Uh, what, Larry? Douglas Barr is not here. I'm going to be completely honest with you. We couldn't find him. Uh, looked up to try to find his agent, and the last person that we know that worked with him was in 1989. Uh, he just seems to have disappeared, and I thought I could, you know, find him at the last minute and get him on the show before anyone even knew, but sorry. Larry, you could have told me before we got the show started. Well, I think that's it. See, everything else is blank now. Blank, like the Match Game show. Well, that's it, guys. That's the Action Figure Show. Larry, tell them how to follow us on social media. Well, before we start uh, talking about how to do social media, I just want to remind everyone, if you go to JumpmanMerch.com, you can buy an action figure show shirt, and that shirt really helps us grow, it helps the channel out and everything, or some other shirts also. But social me media on Instagram is the action figure show, very simple. Now on Twitter, it's a little bit more complicated. Uh, on Twitter, it's a little bit more complicated. It's the action figure show. The action figure show. I don't know why you always have to tell us it's complicated. It's not that complicated. Anyway, thank you for watching. We'll be back next week with the Action Figure Show, but we'll have videos throughout the week. Thank you for watching. Junk man. Thank you, sir, for that unsolicited testimony. <laughs> <laughs>